Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about orbital transfer vehicles or OTVs. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the problem that OTVs are solving? Well, modern electronics are miracle. So they allows us miniaturization. Not only that, it also improves the capability, meaning a satellite today can be much smaller, much cheaper and having far more capability than anything that came few years ago, just few years ago. So fundamentally, we can make really powerful satellite very lightweight. Like we can, if we have 100 kilograms, that's almost surplus nowadays. Meaning if you have like even 30 kilograms, 40 kilograms, you, you got this. You got this, you're good. Like you can do amazing things with that. So that's one side of the equation. However, while that is becoming smaller and better and efficient, uh, the rockets are kind of a different beast. Now rockets uh, have a physics thing and that physics thing says, huge is better the bigger you make the better it becomes and it has to do with simple volume calculation meaning if you increase the diameter of a let's say cube uh, or not cube i would say cylinder the surface area goes by square however the volume goes by cube meaning you get the benefit of far more fuel or propellant for very little mass so if you have an electron rocket, it will always be uh, more expensive than Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will always be more expensive than Starship per ton to orbit, if done correctly. If, unless you have a bureaucracy and other those things, removing those things. I'm talking about just raw mathematics. Mathematics is very clear. If you make a bigger rocket, you will always get better price to uh, ton price per ton to orbit. Like it's the same reason why we build a slow uh, container ships. It always makes more sense. Like you can ship uh, container ships with airplanes also, but yeah, price would be stupid. So same thing. Um, and that's why, again, container ships also started to enter 100 containers, 1000 containers, 5000 containers, 40,000 containers. Physics is one of those things where it's like bigger is better. So we have two contradictory systems. Now, this contradiction is the reason why space is extremely expensive. It's idiotically expensive and uh, basically you uh, we built small rockets as a stopgap solution uh, so basically falcon 9 it it can uh, put more than 10 tons to low earth orbit quite cost effectively and quite frequently also but here's the who the heck is launching 10 ton object into low earth orbit so regularly so we built this and again once this puppy is built where we can dump let's say give or take 100 to 150 ton to low earth orbit even this will have the same problem so we created these things as a stop gas where people are like hey i only need a small satellite i need to go in this orbit how about this so that was the problem so what's the solution solution is otvs because here's it once we can do proper ride sharing it solves all our issue meaning you can take falcon 9 falcon 9 uh, falcon 9 pardon me you can take electron how many stuff it can carry let's say one two three maximum how much falcon 9 can carry Ta -da! so that's the whole part once you can do ride sharing it solves all your cost system and uh, we need a tool like assume falcon 9 as a big bus so this big bus once it goes to low earth orbit we need something to take stuff from this bus to another places. So basically we need a Leo to dedicated orbit for the customers. Leo is one place, like uh, think of it as a metro lo location. So you generally don't live in the metro station. You basically land in metro station then walk to wherever you need to go. So we need that solution, last mile solution. So that is OTV, orbital transfer vehicle. Once it's in orbit, then it apply, deploys its job. So what does it need to, uh, in order to achieve that? Well, it needs solar power, obviously, navigations, communications, and propulsion. Without propulsion, you cannot change it. Thankfully, you do not need enough Delta V because again, the main rocket did the majority of the job. You just need enough Delta V to tune it, just to like precisely, oh, you want to go in this orbit? Here you go. You want to go a bit in this orbit? Here you go. So not too much oomph, uh, but more oomph equals better. So you get that. And you need a safe way to carry and dispatch small satellites. Now that may sound a simple thing, but that's the most hardest thing because it's, uh, you're talking about rockets. Rockets are violently tested uh, during uh, basically uh, practice runs and not to mention the launch is brutally violent itself. So you need a carrier mechanism that can encase a satellite safely while going and safely detach it without any causing an issue. Basically, this may sound super easy. Well, it is easy. This is the easy part. Hard part is not blowing up while you are taking off. At that time, shockwaves, vibrations are brutal. So it is a bit difficult. Now, if you can do that, let's assume you built a carrier me mechanism that allows you to uh, 
precisely dump your smaller payloads wherever they need to go problem solved and if you have high cadence of falcon 9 falcon 9 people are claiming that in this year as in year 2024 uh, it is almost touching three launches per week now i will only call on it once this year is over once we have like finalized but if that's true that's like damn other small satellite launch provider they are having hard time launching 12 times a year and this puppy is like i got this fam so big rockets with high cadence and right share fundamentally solves all our problems so have any other company done it thankfully there's a long list i'm talking only about two big companies so momentous vertigo they, uh, this is one company that is sorting that so they have a small self-powered craft meaning this uh, craft this puppy is fully functional and it's like it's almost a miniature satellite and it is solar powered and it's a water as a propellant so it's also cheaper for them uh, of course di nice water they are sending it to a microwave cavity and like whoosh, whooshing it from there it does work so what it do is like once you put this puppy into low earth orbit this is gonna take basically your launch orbit to dedicated orbit to another dedicated orbit it has enough propellant enough solar energy that it can do quite a lot of delivery after it's in low earth orbit meaning this is like almost putting falcon uh, basically electron on top of falcon 9 and by the way uh, you can put many of this into a single Falcon 9 launch. That's why I said like Falcon 9 has bonkers capability. 10 tons to low Earth orbit while having full reuse. That's bonkers. This is not that heavy. So fundamentally, it can deploy multiple satellites in different different orbits while only utilizing one launch. And it has enough thrust for enough flexibility, meaning in terms of uh, they can have one orbit, another orbit, another orbit. Like you can do a lot of things. So this is one company and they have successfully built, launched, deployed, tested, everything is working. They are improving their system and they are good to go. They have done it like they, got, they already got customer long list of customers. So this is one option. Then we have Sherpa, Space Tug, another option. This is an, uh, now they are focusing on making modular OTPs. The idea is that there are different customers, different customers will require different things. For example, CubeSats uh, can do a lot, but sometimes you may need a bit bigger room. So they are like, hey, let's not build one uh, system. Let's build what, whatever customer requires. So benefit of that is like they have range of size and capability, meaning if you require for some reason, uh, let's say a lot of lot of CubeSat launch, they can build a custom uh, device for you. If you are like, hey, I do not need too much uh, space, but I do need a lot of Delta V, they can tune that part. So that way you can get more oomph out of it. So they can, uh, capability and size is flexible. They have a lot of options. So they have low power that is like from low Earth orbit to different low Earth orbit to enough Delta V that it can take from low Earth orbit to moon. Now, let that be very clear. It's not going to be super fast. It's not Saturn 5. It's not going to be like, okay, low Earth orbit to moon in three days. It's going to take a sweet time, but it can be done. And again, for the price that you can do it now, it's like free compared to any other mission profiles that we used to have. So that's what they are offering. And in terms of propellant choice, they have three options. They have electric ion propulsions. They have green propellant propulsion, basically uh, peroxides that are not uh, as harmful uh, as a uh, hypergolic, sorry, not peroxide, hypergolic propellants that are not as brutal as previous systems and hybrid systems that will allow a bit more oomph. So they have a very good track record. And yes, they are also in space, actually have launched it, deployed it. They got it done, sorted. And you can see like they have a catalog, like you need FX series, LTE series, AC series, LTC series or SE series. They're like, bro, we got this. And they have launched most of them. So they have very good track record, very good customer satisfaction and a lot of R&D because once they start to do deep space mission, that is that uh, ES series, they, they unlock way more things that you can imagine. Like imagine this way, India did a uh, Mars mission. This can do that surprisingly cheaply surprisingly cheaply and yeah that's the whole benefit of having giant bus to low earth orbit once you are in low earth orbit you can utilize ion engine to slowly increase your speed to such a point where it's like mars here i come cheaply so this is sherpa and be mindful i'm only focusing on two two company because they have the largest track record uh, there are other also and some are even more crazy so what can we expect in the future well here's deal uh this tool this orbital transfer vehicle removes the need for small satellite launches because that was the whole point of building electron the idea with electron is that oh if you do ride share with uh, falcon 9 it's cheaper nobody is denying that but it will always have the consequences a uh, when it's gonna launch because again they had to wait for it to fill up which no longer is an issue another is it's gonna carry you wherever the major pay players are carrying you meaning if let's say it had a big satellite that big satellite determined where the smaller satellites will go that's no longer an issue 
So not only this puppy is launching very frequently, so that time benefit gone. Uh, this has enough uh, bidding wars, enough people, uh, you know, applying bids on it. It's very quickly. If you have money, go. Like you can shrink the time so quickly. It's almost time. We can put think about the satellite, build a satellite, launch the damn satellite in months. That can be done today now. Of course, it will be expensive. It's like same as airline tickets. If you book it just uh, like, you know, before launch, it's going to be expensive. If you waited, uh, like, you know, if you are patient, you can do it quite effectively. So small satellite launch vehicles no longer have any. This is what I offer to the market. There is nothing left anymore. And again, physics is very clear. If you build a big rocket, it will give you better propellant advantage. And there are many fixed costs. For example, uh, the range safety. It's going to cost the same if you have a small rocket or a giant rocket, the same. Uh, Coast Guard, all that, all the paperwork, all of those things have fixed cost. So it also makes more economical sense per ton to orbit to actually reduce the paperwork. So how do you reduce paperwork? Launch more of it in one go. By the way, uh, Falcon 9 can easily carry five or six of orbital transfer vehicles. Yeah. So you flat out cannot match by building a small satellite vehicle, uh, the cadence and this uh, cost that a Falcon 9 has today in the market. That's not going to happen. Now you may be like, uh, so what does this mean? This simply means every small satellite launch provider has to wisen up and they have to jump to large rocket as quickly as possible. Thankfully, uh, Rocket Labs, they have realized that they are working behind the scenes for um, uh, neutron rocket for that reason. Uh, I do not know about uh, Firefly, but Firefly does have the benefit that US Space Force is uh, paying for them. They are like, we like the idea of SpaceX, it's awesome and great and all that, but we never want one point of failure. We always want to have other backups. So they are uh, working on this. However, that is dubious given the fact if Blue Origin starts to make another bigger rocket that will again utilize this. So <laughs> yeah, that's the issue. So what does this all mean? All of this means in one simple thing, go big or go home. Any Tom, Dick and Harry is like, I'm going to build a small satellite launch vehicle. Again, from a technology point of view, from an engineering point of view, it's awesome. But unless you have a government uh, backed contract, it's not going to go very far, like flat out. Like you will struggle your ass off in order to get four launches a year. That's a big thing for small startups. And this will be like, yeah, that's like a few weeks for us. Not even three weeks. That's like two weeks, done, go home. So fundamentally, we have reached the era of big players. Go big or go home. So Blue Origin, uh, again, if their uh, rockets uh, start to become big, they will also utilize the same thing. And be mindful, all the companies and all the ecosystem for bidding and booking and all that structure is already sorted because of Falcon 9. So, ta-da. So this is the future. That's why I specified uh, this was not there in 2017 when uh, Agnikul built their company. Now it is. That's why I have very clear uh, instincts on small satellite launch providers. They have to go big very quickly. And again, they have to be reusable also. That allows them to have a bit more cost of cadence. So this is the future. That's why I said the small satellite launch vehicles. Yeah, most of the companies will disappear very quickly unless they go big. So this was my presentation on orbital transfer vehicles. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like, press this twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.